Yeah. Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, Ansible Developer Tools uh, roadmap. Uh, things that the Ansible uh, team and Developer Tools team is working on. Some of the things that we already uh, delivered. Uh, some of the things that we are planning to do. And then take feedback and uh, uh, basically gather our feedback to identify what all things you would like to see in the Developer Tools projects. So I'll, I'll talk about the VS Code extension, uh, some of the newer features, already implemented features, then uh, what are the uh, enhancements that we did in the Lint uh, over the past couple of months, and what, what we plan in future. Then uh, we'll talk uh, about Ansible Navigator uh, things, and uh, in that I will be talking about a new tool that the team is working on, that is Ansible Risk Insights. So uh, uh, after the uh, uh, VS Code extension was uh, published uh, uh, in the initial days, it only supported module uh, or task name auto completions. Uh, it didn't support any other plugins, uh, uh, completion or uh, completions or connection plugins or filter plugins or lookup plugins completion. It, it didn't have any understanding. So we started slowly improving on that, and the first iteration of that was adding post name auto completions. So uh, with this, uh, uh, if I'll, I'll also share my screen. So if when you are at host uh, keyword, host colon keyword, and ask for uh, completions, uh, it will show you what are all the available uh, uh, yeah, host names in your inventory. This supports both uh, static inventory and dynamic inventory. Uh, let's say if you uh, so in my Ansible config CSV file, I have uh, pointed uh, in my defaults. Uh, 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 section, I have pointed to where the inventory file should reside. Uh, I can change that to uh, dynamic inventory, and when I make any changes to the inventory, I will have to uh, run a command from command palette, so that is shift command P, and then uh, resync ansible inventory is a newer command that was added uh, for this extension. When we do that, it basically in the background at the language server side, it runs uh, ansible inventory command and then uh, fetches all the host name and stores in the uh, memory. So now, uh, when I hit uh, uh, inline suggestion again, it it should show uh, all the uh, hosts that were part of the dynamic inventory. I reloaded the window. Yeah. Uh, so these are the parts, uh, these are the hosts that were uh, in the dynamic inventory. So this was a feature that was added recently. Then the Ansible Navigator run entry points for playbook. Uh, when you right click on the uh, playbook, you will get two options. Uh, one is to uh, run via Ansible Navigator run, uh, and second is uh, via Ansible Navigator playbook run. So this was added in the first iteration, but uh, did this uh, command didn't uh, worked with execution environment. So if you pass any execution environment parameters in the VS Code setting, it didn't pick that. So uh, that issue, uh, this enhancement was added uh, in the newer version. Then the Ansible metadata display bar, in, uh, so if you look at the bottom here, uh, this basically tells uh, users as to where uh, the Ansible path uh, has been picked, what are the collection location, what is the uh, configuration. So basically it introspects the Ansible environment and provides a view to the user uh, in a consolidated format. Uh, then uh, the Ansible language identification for open file. Uh, Ansible uses uh, .yaml, uh, uh, .yaml extension. And there is already an extension supported by Red Hat uh, that, is, uh, that is also named as Red Hat YAML extension. So basically, uh, it used to uh, conflict uh, with the, that extension. And most of the times, the language was not identified as Ansible here. So a user would have to manually go here uh, and then set the uh, language type. So we did fix this in a recent version by introspecting the content of the file. So if the file had content like host or import playbook, that means it's an Ansible keyword and we used to programmatically, uh, we will programmatically assign the document as Ansible language. So this was important because uh, only when the document is identified as Ansible language, it will start providing the Ansible specific features like uh, uh, task completions, model completions, and so on. Uh, then uh, uh, gather uh, telemetry to improve user experience. Uh, so this was added basically to uh, understand the, uh, how users are using that extension and what 
uh, more things we can add to uh, further enhance the user experience. And the, whatever telemetry data that is gathered is documented uh, on the repository page. So right now we uh, capture these events. I, I won't go through all of them, but uh, any command that user runs, uh, and if the, after the command run there is an error, we capture that telemetry data. Then which Ansible version uh, that is used? Is it visible now? Thank you, guys. Yeah. So the Ansible version. Preferences and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> is, is it okay now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, the, nothing uh, uh, personal identified information is stored. Even the path or the uh, path of the playbook uh, and all has been anonymized. And uh, this basically, uh, the extension creates a unique ID uh, within the home folder. And that ID is being used to track uh, the number of unique installations uh, for the extensions. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, specific to Ansible, we capture Ansible core version, Ansible lint version, uh, how many times user has invoked Ansible playbook and Ansible uh, navigator, uh, and then uh, receiving Ansible inventory command. So, this is what we capture right now. couple of months, uh, uh, some of the new features that will be adding to extension is the AI-based uh, code inline suggestion for, uh, for Ansible, that is the wisdom project that we Walter talked about earlier. Uh, then uh, settings to enable disable wisdom service. So wisdom service, uh, AI-based code suggestion will be one part of it. Uh, then within the wisdom service, we will be adding uh, uh, capabilities to run Ansible lit as a service uh, and other tools uh, to provide diagnostic information. Uh, so all those knobs will be provided under the wisdom service. Uh, then uh, uh, running Ansible Lint as a service for diagnostic as part of wisdom service. So that's the other thing. And then uh, to use the wisdom service, user will have to authenticate uh, themselves. For that, uh, we'll be adding a new container view uh, within VS Code for Ansible, and it will have a login page. Uh, and user will have to go and log in to uh, basically uh, authenticate the uh, uh, authenticate the user uh, with the wisdom service. So. These features will be coming uh, around the March time frame. Any questions till now? Yeah. Uh, so the authentication, uh, authentication feature I covered, then variable auto-completion uh, is uh, one of the features that uh, will be added as part of the wisdom uh, enhancement functionality. Uh, so when the model provides inline suggestions, uh, uh, in the post-processing, we'll be stripping out all the variables uh, that uh, from the task suggestions and those empty variables uh, uh, the cursor will be basically within the empty the Jinja basis and uh, when user asks for auto completion it will provide all, all the list of variables that are defined in user uh, workspace so it will be easier for uh, user to complete uh, the task write the task with what is uh, defined in the uh, context of the uh, workspace here so any variables that are defined in roles uh, or within playbooks can be uh, used to auto complete here. Then uh, connection name auto uh, completion. So whenever a user writes connection keyword colon, uh, it will uh, provide for a list of all the connection plugins that are installed uh, on the system, or are that or that are part of execution environment. If user is using the uh, EE settings. Uh, then uh, play, uh, right now, all the collection uh, that the extension looks for is from the standard part. But that's not how the Ansible core works. It basically, if your playbook has an uh, adjacent collection, uh, Ansible underscore collections folder, it will first uh, look into that uh, folder to figure out what all other collections installed. So to give that same user experience uh, through VS Code, we will be enabling this feature wherein uh, if a playbook has an adjacent uh, Ansible underscore collections folder, uh, it will first uh, go and uh, uh, traverse all the plugins in that folder and then it will start uh, providing the suggestions based on that. Uh, so moving on, Ansible Lint. Uh, so la one of the major uh, feature that was added uh, in Ansible Lint was profiles. 
so profile support uh, was to allow running set of rules for a given profile. So there will uh, there are uh, multiple list of profiles that were added. Uh, the first was min. Uh, it it basically ensures that, that uh, this is the minimal set of rules that uh, user need to pass to uh, ensure that the playbook is uh, running properly. Uh, then uh, the next is the basic. Uh, so prevent any uh, coding issues, enforce standards, uh, styles and formatting. So this uh, this uh, list is being in ordered format. So anything that is in basic uh, extends the uh, upper one. So it extends the min rules that are a part of the min profile. Then uh, moderate profile is uh, it ensures the content adheres to the best practices uh, for making content easier to read and maintain. Uh, then safety it avoids non-deterministic so it has rules that avoids non-deterministic outcome or security concerns. Then shared uh, it ensures content follows the best practices for packaging and publishing. And uh, uh, so this uh, shared is basically anyone who wants to upload their content to uh, Galaxy, Automation Hub or uh, private instance. And production is uh, mainly focused towards content that is geared towards uh, Ansible Automation Platform uh, or validated content or certified content. So, uh, the list of rules that are part of each profile is being documented in the Ansible Lint page here. Uh, so uh, you can uh, go and refer offline what each of the rule does here. Improved documentation, I think Don here, uh, he did a great job of improving uh, Ansible in documentation. Even uh, Sorin worked a lot on uh, fine tuning the rule documentation and uh, a lot of other improvements there. A couple of new rules were added. Uh, one was uh, require underscore Ansible version in metadata. So it will check that uh, uh, if the value is only for supported Ansible uh, core versions. This, uh, this basically came from the uh, partner in AMT. Uh, then uh, rules to check uh, if collection has changed log. Uh, then uh, task option validation uh, with uh, uh, other conditions. So basically, uh, there, right now there was no way to figure out whether the uh, uh, arguments that are written for a task they are valid or not until unless uh, uh, until unless you run the playbook itself. So this rule will basically check uh, those validations and there, there if there are any conditional within the uh, arguments like required, required if and so on. Uh, so that uh, that rule was newly added, and then some uh, formatting rule around the name template. If the name of the task has uh, a Jinja variable in it, it should occur at the end of the sentence, and the sentence should be meaningful. So this was mainly done uh, from Wisdom point of view, so that Wisdom understand uh, the task's name is properly defined, and Wisdom understands the context properly. Uh, then uh, uh, document features are uh, uh, focused around running Wisdom as a service. So right now, Ansible Lint, uh, if you run a playbook around uh, for Ansible Lint, it would require entire Ansible setup to be installed. Uh, so that is not possible in a, while running Ansible as a service uh, as, uh, uh, environment. Uh, when a user wants to upload a playbook and then get uh, uh, formatting related issues and so on. So there are some changes required in Lint uh, for this functionality to work. Uh, then uh, enhance the auto format functionality. Uh, right now, Ansible Lint write, uh, it was uh, uh, contributed by a community member. Uh, it is in tech preview mode right now, but uh, we will be enhancing this functionality further to basically uh, auto format uh, more rules and uh, make it uh, more user friendly to write uh, Ansible content that is follows the best practice. This will also be used uh, as part of wisdom uh, to uh, uh, improve the quality of the training data set uh, going forward. Then add content scoring capability based on profiles and rules, uh, rules part. So basically, just like Flake it uh, does uh, on the, on the uh, scale of 10, you'll be getting what is the uh, score of your content. Uh, this is the new rules. Uh, 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 that is, there, there are a bunch of rules that we plan to add. Uh, and then uh, Ansible run, uh, uh, Lint run. Uh, so right now, uh, Ansible test has a sanity uh, uh, subcommand that basically runs on Python files and provides sanity related output. So uh, to provide a single uh, interface, user interface, uh, we will be having uh, Ansible sanity uh, run through the lint interface. So, uh, lint will basically uh, spawn an instance of Ansible test sanity and it will provide a user with uh, sanity related uh, issues, formatting related issues in Python plugins. Uh, 
uh, moving on to Ansible Navigator. Uh, so in Ansible Navigator, uh, right now, uh, uh, in, uh, in within controller, uh, so uh, within controller, when you run a playbook, there is an option to pre-install the dependent collection and rule. To mimic this behavior uh, uh, with uh, off controller, Ansible Navigator, in Ansible Navigator, we'll be adding uh, this functionality to basically pre-install, uh, pre-run Ansible Galaxy to install collections and rules. Then uh, recently, Ansible uh, Core added the functionality for uh, plugin documentations for filter and test plugin. Uh, and that uh, needs to be added in Ansible Navigator as well. Right now, it uh, just looks into the uh, plugins that has documentation string. Uh, and uh, Ansible Navigator will be enhanced to read the YAML files along with the uh, uh, filter plugins and test plugins. Then add controller integration. So previously this feature was part of uh, Navigator, but it was later removed. Uh, and we will be re-adding that to basically, so through Ansible Navigator UI, you, will, you can invoke the control, uh, control APIs to basically trigger a job within a controller and so on. Uh, then add uh, support for custom key mappings. Uh, so any BIM bindings you can uh, uh, configure in Ansible Navigator. And uh, right now the uh, tests run for Ansible Navigator are not that great. So we'll be, this is a dev uh, oriented task, so we'll be working on improving the run test time. And yeah, any questions till now? If no, uh, this is a tool I was talking about, the risk insights, uh, uh, this tool that is being worked upon by the IBM team. And uh, it, the main purpose was of this was to evaluate the quality and the risk of Ansible content. Uh, and uh, this, uh, we will be using this Ansible Risk Insights to post-process the wisdom suggestions to basically mm -hmm. remove any uh, remove any personal identified information from the uh, suggestions that the wisdom service provides. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, replace the variables uh, with what is defined in the user context. So make that suggestion more relevant to the user. Uh, so this is a GitHub page. Uh, you can take a look at the uh, project and be free to contribute. That's, uh, that's something to uh, interest you. And even uh, this uh, uh, risk insights we plan to integrate with automation of whenever uh, user uploads a certified content, uh, we'll be running risk insights to identify any uh, risk associated with that content. So it basically uh, crawls to the dependency uh, supply chain, uh, dependencies of the <coughs> collections and roles and creates this uh, supply chain uh, thing. So there is a block diagram here. Uh, there is a dependency caller, caller then uh, extractors, and then custom rules that would be run on each of the tasks and the findings will be identified as potential uh, risk detectors. So these are some of the rules uh, that are currently supported, inbound transfer, outbound transfer, download and exec, uh, and so on. So any questions till now? Any feedback and what you would like to see in uh, these projects or if you have used it, any issues you face? would like to hear about that. So uh, this is a GitHub pro, uh, board where the team tracks the progress and you can see uh, uh, what all things have been done and what we plan to do in future. And then there is this uh, Ansible DevTools uh, ISCN metric channel where all the maintainers hang out. So any questions? If not, that was my talk. There was one question. Hey, sir. Yeah, no, please. So everything you showed us is great, in my opinion. Maybe I will stop using just naked BI. <laughs> Thank you. Something I would uh, I would like to see, and maybe you have suggestion. I would like to have a proper debug environment where I can stop things, mm -hmm. check what the value of my variable, especially if I'm kind of overriding the variables or transforming them a lot. Uh, is this anywhere in your thoughts? Yeah, so, uh, so the question is, uh, is there a way to uh, debug uh, the environment uh, using uh, Ansible Playbook, uh, for Ansible Playbooks and uh, videos through VS Code, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, a colleague of mine uh, has been working uh, on this, uh, uh, adding a debugger in VS Code extension, but that requires some changes on the core side, and 
we do have plans to add that in uh, coming volumes. I don't think there should be an issue. Yeah, it should. The doc says it should work. Yeah. But if it doesn't have to be VS Code, okay. Good. I mean, uh, there is also uh, this VS Codium uh, build that is being published. Uh, so you can, you, can, you can try that out and see if there are any issues and report that. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Um, so we'll be back in a little more fast.